Hi everyone, this is Jeremy from Main Takeaway, and today we're going to be talking about Seeking Wisdom Part 2 by Peter Bevelin. Here's a look at the cover, and in this video you will learn the 12 guidelines to better thinking, and how to use them in your business. You will see insights from Albert Einstein, Warren Buffett, and other great human minds. 1. Models of Reality Developing the habit of mastering the multiple models which underlie reality is the best thing you can do. It's just so much fun, and it works so well. Ask, what is the underlying big idea? Do I understand its application in practical life? Does it help me understand the world? How does it work? Why does it work? Under which conditions does it work? How reliable is it? What are its limitations? The models that come from hard science and engineering are the most reliable. The engineering idea of a backup system of breaking points, of critical mass, all come into play. We need to understand and use the big ideas from all important disciplines. Mathematics, physics, chemistry, engineering, biology, and psychology. Have a full kit of tools. Go through them in your mind, checklist style. Find connections between ideas. Derive new ideas from these connections. Combine ideas from different disciplines. The ideas from scaling from mathematics. Systems and constraints from physics. And competitive advantage from microeconomics. Often explain how business value is created or destroyed. Disney is an amazing example of autocatalysis. They had all those movies and owned the copyright. When the video cassette was invented, Disney didn't have to invent anything or do anything except take the thing out of the can and stick it on the cassette. If you don't have a full repertoire of models, you overutilize the limited repertoire you have, including use of models that are inappropriate just because they're available to you and the limited stock you have in mind. A model should be easy to use. If it's complicated, we don't use it. Short sentences stick in our memory. 2. Meaning To understand meaning, ask basic questions. The meaning of words. What do the words mean? What do they imply? Can we translate words, ideas, or statements into an ordinary one that tells us something? The meaning of events. What effect is produced? What is really happening using X words? What is accomplished? Causes. What is happening here and why? Is this working? Why or why not? Implications. What is the consequence of this observation, event, etc.? What does that imply? Purpose. Why should we do that? Why do I want this to happen? Why is this better than that? If you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. A quote from Albert Einstein. Value is an estimate rather than a precise figure. Using precise numbers is, in fact, foolish. Working with a range of possibilities is a better approach. Money does not know where it comes from. There's no sense in paying more for a glamorous business if you're getting the same amount of money. If you can pinpoint it, you're kidding yourself. You'd be amazed how inexact we are. In hiring, look for three things. Intelligence, energy, and character. If they don't have the last one, the first two will kill you. Bad terminology is the enemy of good thinking. 3. Simplification. Make fewer and better decisions. Why? Because it forces us to think more on each decision and thereby reduces our chances of mistakes. The art of being wise is the art of knowing what to overlook. Often we try to get too much information, including misinformation or information of no use to explain or predict. We also focus on details of what's irrelevant or unknowable and overlook the obvious truths. Dealing with what's important forces us to prioritize. There are often just a few actions that produce most of what we are trying to achieve. There are huge dangers in getting too caught up in the minute of using a computer so that you miss the organized common sense. Berkshire Hathaway quotes, After 25 years, I have not learned how to solve different business problems. What we have learned is to avoid them. A good business throws up one easy decision after another, whereas a bad one gives us horrible choices, decisions that are extremely hard to make. To do two things at once is to do neither. The formulation of a problem is often more essential than its solution, which may be merely a matter of mathematics or experimental skill. Quote from Albert Einstein. Buffett's genius was largely a, a genius of character, of patience, discipline, and rationality. His talent sprang from his unrivaled independence of mind and the ability to focus on his work 
and shut out the world. A few major opportunities, clearly recognizable as such, will usually come to one who continuously searches and waits, with a curious mind. 4. Rules and filters. Walk away from anything you don't understand, can't quantify, or doesn't work. Only deal with people you trust. Extraordinary discipline does not eliminate losses. It prevents foolish losses. To evaluate new business ideas, use four criteria as filters. One, can I understand it? Two, does it look like it has some kind of sustainable competitive advantage? Three, is it the management composed of able and honest people? Four, is the price right? Understanding is thinking that we have a reasonable probability of being able to assess where the business will be in 10 years. If there are very important items that aren't on your checklist, you can crash. A checklist must include each critical item necessary for safety and avoiding accidents so you don't need to rely on memory for items to be checked. 5. Goals. Have them, be specific, with a time frame and an outcome. 6. Alternatives. Opportunity cost. Our time and money are limited. If we make a decision to do one thing, we are deciding not to do some other available thing. Every minute we choose to spend on one thing is a minute unavailable to spend on other things. Every dollar we invest is a dollar unavailable for other available investments. If we decide to spend money today instead of investing for the future, we give up the opportunity to spend more in the future. If I decide to play golf today, I miss the opportunity to finish this book on time. Warren Buffett tells us what to look for in a spouse. Look for someone who will love you unconditionally and will subtly encourage you to be better than you thought you can be. Some decisions have a greater influence on our lives. A decision that will influence our lives 10 years from now is far more important than one that will influence us only today. But if we choose the wrong spouse, education, career, friends, or investment, it may haunt us for a long, long time. 7. Consequences Whenever someone makes an assertion to you, always ask, and then what? Ask it about everything. Some systems should be made deliberately a little unfair if they carry better consequences for us all. With the Navy model, there's no excuse. Very simply, if your shit goes wrong, aground, your career is over. It doesn't matter whether it was your fault or not. Nobody's interested in your fault. It's just a rule for the good of all, all effects considered. Civilization works better with some of these no-fault rules. Considering the net benefit, I don't care if one captain has some un unfairness in his life. 8. Quantification. How can we evaluate if a decision is intelligent or not if we can't measure it against a relevant and important yardstick? Some things can't be measured exactly, so estimating a range is the next best alternative. Everybody overweighs the stuff that can be numbered because it yields to the statistical techniques they're taught in academia. The hard to measure stuff may be more important. The best business to own is one that over an extended period can employ large amounts of incremental capital at very high rates of return. The more our calculations depend on cash flows far out in the future, the more opportunities there are for unwanted events, and the more uncertain our expected return. Whether the business sells nails or telecom equipment, if more money is going out than coming in on a present value basis, it is worthless. Value. It is worthless. Value is destroyed, not created by any business that loses money over its lifetime, no matter how high interior valuation may get. 9. Evidence. Do what scientists do. Strive for objectivity. Scientists try to describe the world as it is, not as they want it to be. Science is a great antidote to the poison of enthusiasm and superstition. It does not make any difference how beautiful your guess is. If it disagrees with the experiment, it is wrong. If we don't guess why, there can be no experiments since a test has nothing to guide it. All observations must be for or against some view if it is to be of any service. Quote from Darwin. You have to have some idea of why you're looking for information. Don't just collect endless amounts of data and then only later try to make sense of it. You have to start with some idea of reality. Look to see whether what you're seeing fits in with the basic thought structure. Miss B, who ran our furniture mart, over a 50-year period, we'd seen her take $500 and turn it into a business that made $18 million pre-tax, so we knew she was competent. The past record is the best single guide. Archaeology. Just because something hasn't been found doesn't mean it won't be found. Instead of verifying a statement, 
it is something it is sometimes better to prove it false. A single piece of evidence in favor of a statement does not prove its truth. It only supports it. But a single piece of evidence against it will show that it is false. Engage in self-criticism. Question your assumptions. Explain the opposite of your beliefs. Ask, assume I'm wrong, how will I know? Why may the opposite theory be correct? Then look for that evidence. Often we don't see our weaknesses, and thus we are not motivated to improve. Take your initial assumption and try to dis disprove it. Automatic tendency in psychology is called first conclusion bias, but you can train yourself away from it. Backward thinking. A lot of success comes from knowing what you really want to avoid. Avoid what causes the opposite of what you want to achieve. Wise men profit more from fools than fools from wise men. For the wise men shun the mistakes of the fools, but the fools do not imitate the successes of the wise. To reduce mistakes, we should study failures with severe consequences. Often, we learn more from understanding why something doesn't work than from why it does. Assume we've achieved our goal, then ask, what was the purpose? Was this what I wanted? What is needed to achieve this? Then work backward to the beginning. Study evidence that implies the opposite of what is normal and ask why. Use negative rules. Tell people what they can't do. Practice zero-based thinking. Start with a clean sheet of paper and ask, if we do that, how can we best achieve our goal? 11. Risk. We think of business risk in terms of what can happen in 5, 10, or 15 years from now that will destroy, modify, or reduce the economic strengths we believe currently exist in business. If we can think of very much that can go wrong, we just forget it. The best way to minimize risk is to think. A single big mistake could wipe out a long stream of successes. We therefore need someone genetically programmed to recognize and avoid serious risks, including those never before encountered. Temperament is also important. Independent thinking, emotional stability, and a keen understanding of both human and institutional behavior is vital to long-term success. Consequences. Can I handle them? Are they reversible? And in which alternative do I lose less? 12. Attitudes. It's not that we have so little time, but that we waste much of it. Life, if you know how to use it, is long. You will hear many men saying, when I am 50, but what guarantee do you have that your life will last longer? What do we want out of life? The shorter the list, but the more likely it is to focus on things that matter. Know what you understand and what you don't understand. It's not how big the circle is, but it's terribly important that you know where the perimeter is. Use your advantages. Where do you have an edge over others? If we have nothing to hide, we have nothing to fear. How would you be willing to see your actions described by an informed and critical reporter on the front page? Act as an exemplar. Avoid controversies. Optimists live longer than pessimists. That's it for part two of Seeking Wisdom by Peter Bevelin. You can click on the link below to get the book yourself. You can share, share this info with someone on Facebook who needs it. Or tweet at Main Takeaway of how you're going to benefit from it. How you're going to implement it in your life. Or share a comment below. We'd love to hear what you liked or disliked about the video.